All right, we are back today and we're actually talking about our final two rules, which are negation introduction and negation elimination. So first, let's just talk about negation and what that means. Well, the negation is our tilde. Tilde, like that. And unlike all the other rules, which were telling us about, you know, this is true, or these two ideas together are true, if something's true, then something else is true. This rule actually tells us what's not true. It tells us what is false. So if I had tilde B, it would mean B is not true. Or, you know, tilde C, C is not true. Maybe I don't like cars. Not C. We'll write it tilde C. So when you are introducing or eliminating a negation, there's one really key important factor, and that is deriving a contradiction. So you might be wondering, what kind of contradiction are you talking about? Well, the contradiction is when along your scope line, you have something that says the opposite of what it is. So maybe somewhere on your scope line it says C is true, and then later it says that C is false, not C. That's what you call a contradiction. When something says that something is true, and then simultaneously says that it's false. That's a contradiction. It disagrees with itself as to whether or not something is true. So it's, just, it's a way of showing an inconsistency in something. If somebody has a theory and you want to disprove it, a good way to do that is to show that it's inconsistent, so that it disagrees with itself like this. So that's a really important factor in using the negation introduction and negation elimination rules. It's finding a contradiction. So let's take a look first at our negation introduction rule, and then we'll look at the elimination rule, but they're pretty much exactly the same, and it works based on these opposites. One of them starts with saying something's true, and then we conclude saying it's false. The other one starts with saying it's false and concludes that it's true. So we're working with opposites. C is the opposite of not C. If you had um, P and Q, the opposite of that would be not P and Q. So it, it hinges upon recognizing what is an opposite. And the opposite is just something that has not in front of the same expression. All right, so let's look at negation introduction. All right, here is our negation introduction rule. And what's going on here is that we're trying to introduce this negation here down at the bottom. That's what we want to conclude with. So to do it, we start by assuming the opposite of it. That's really key. If we have not P, the opposite of it is P. So we assume it's opposite, and then somehow we derive a contradiction. So saying something's true and simultaneously saying it's false. So here we start with, we wanted not P, we wanted to introduce that negation. So we assume P is true, we derive the contradiction where it says Q is true and it says Q is false. And then to cite that, we cite lines one through three where we had our subderivation and then tilde, introduction, not introduction. Okay, so that is the negation introduction rule. Now, the negation elimination rule is really similar. So I can just erase that, right? Negation elimination. And it is the exact opposite of what we just did. Instead of introducing the negation, we just want to prove a positive, and so we start by assuming it's opposite, which in this case is already negation. Okay, so in a negation elimination, we assume that something's not true, we derive a contradiction, and then that tells us that the thing that we started with actually is true. Okay, so the reasoning behind the negation rules and where students often get hung up is they look at this and they say, but Q has nothing to do with P. 
how is this contradiction telling us anything about P? Because it doesn't usually have to do with this. I mean, it could be P. Maybe you have P and not P. That's a fine contradiction. But students often wonder, what does that have anything to do with what we're talking about? Well, the basic concept could be illustrated with an example. So, take this for instance. How about we have the argument, if Bob goes to New York, then he is not in California. That's an assumption. And then we say Bob is in California. And from that, we conclude that Bob did not go to New York. Well, that makes pretty good sense when we're just thinking about it. If Bob went to New York, he wouldn't be in California. He is in California, so we know that he didn't go to New York. But how do we go about proving that line of reasoning? What rules could we use to show that? Well, when we're looking at the argument, we look down here and we, have, we want to prove that he didn't go to New York. But we don't see that information not in anywhere up there. We just see in. And so we go, well, how are we going to prove that in is not true? What we use is we use the negation rule. In this case, we see the negation there, so we want to introduce it. It wasn't there before. So we write negation, introduction. That's what we want. And then what we do, according to the rule, is we draw ourselves a separate scope line, so a subderivation. And our assumption here is the opposite of what we want to prove. In this case, the opposite of not in is just in. We assume in is true. And that's like saying in our head, well, if he did go to New York, let's find out what happens if he went to New York. Well, we know according to number one, if he went to New York, then he's not in California. So by conditional elimination from line one and then line three, we say, if he went to New York, then he's not in California. But then, we notice that on line two, it says he is in California. So, we reiterate that piece of information from line two. And now what we've done is we've derived a contradiction. We say, if he did go to New York, then we end up with this piece, these pieces of information that contradict each other. We end up with saying, He's not in California, and he is in California at the same time. That's not possible. So we know that the assumption we started with, it can't be true if it leads us into a contradiction. So we go ahead and we conclude that he's not gone to New York. We can finish numbering, and then where we got that negation introduction was this subderivation, lines 3 through 5, and that's what we cite down there. So again, our assumption in the beginning was, if he goes to New York, then he's not in California. Then we say he is in California. So to prove that he didn't go to New York, we assume, well, what if he did? If he went to New York, he would not be in California. From conditional elimination, line one and line three, and then we say, but he is in California, according to line two. So we know that the assumption that he went to New York can't be true, and we conclude that he did not go to New York. So. That is an example that illustrates the negation introduction rule. So there you have it. Those are the last two rules um, that I'll be talking about for natural deduction, which was the negation introduction and the negation elimination rules.